you, but there we go. I mean, when we, like, you know, we, we sometimes go to tea rooms in normal circumstances, not at the moment, um, but when, when things are more open, you know, like, for example, in the summer when, when things were a bit more normal, we went to a tea room. Um, you, you kind of vary up there a little bit, don't you? When, when, we, when you go out to have a cup of tea. I don't remember when I last had a cup of tea. Uh, when we've been out, I tend to have coffee. No, but okay. So when we went to Lincoln on the on the holiday in in, in the summer, yeah, you we we went to a tea room because it was Mum's birthday, and I had tea. I I I think you did. Oh well, fair enough. We all we all got a pot of tea, and there was like a a special there, like a special kind of tea, and I think you had it as well. So that's just based on my observation. But you have a right to drink tea however you like. Even if I disagree with you, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you're just wrong, man. Um, anyway, um, I think that kind of concludes this tea segment. We've been talking about tea for like ten minutes. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> let's move on to segment three. Oh, what's that? This, please. So, there's a very specific reason that I wanted my dad to be on the podcast this week, and it's something that is entirely relevant to basically everyone in the world. And that is that you've had your first dose of the uh, COVID vaccine, haven't you? That's right. Last Wednesday. Yeah, it was slightly awkward timing because it would have been a full week when this comes out. Uh, <laughs> but let's do all the all the classic questions. Uh, which vaccine did you have? I'll tell you which vaccine you had. You had the Pfizer and BioNTech. <laughs> <laughs> Pfizer. The Pfizer BioNTech, like I just said. Yeah, so which was quite funny because I, I said to mum, Oh, I reckon dad's going to have the Pfizer one. I just have a feeling that you're going to have the Pfizer vaccine. Mum's like, No, no, it's going to be the Oxford, As- Oxford AstraZeneca. That's the most common one. That's the one that most people are having. And I said, Nah, nah. Imagine my odds, though. <laughs> and then it was the Pfizer one. And I, I joked that I, I should have put money on it. But <laughs> there we go. Uh, how was uh, the experience? Right. Okay. <clears throat> By way of background, I would just point out that a colleague of mine from work who lives near, near here went to have her vaccine done a week or two earlier than me at the same place. And she said that uh, she had to wait in the car for a while. And hers was around half past four, I think. So when I booked mine, I decided I wanted something early in the morning so I chose the slot between 8.40 and 8.50. I was also extremely lucky with the weather. It was a gorgeous day and everything was very, very well managed. You're told where to go. You have to fill out uh, a form, say you consent to the vaccine. I cannot compliment the people there highly enough. They are doing an absolutely brilliant job. In terms of the experience, everybody who is listening to this knows what having an injection is like, I would imagine. So it wasn't that different to any other sort of injection in your upper arm. But what I would say in terms of side effects is that by the end of the day, my arm was very sore and I was feeling really, really tired. So uh, because my arm was feeling sore, I took a couple of paracetamols. Uh, but after a good night's sleep, I was mostly okay the next day, although it was, my arm was still sore for a little while. But it's uh, it's not something to worry about any more than any other injection would be. So h- how do you feel about COVID now that you are sort of partially protected, I suppose? like Do, do you feel less concerned about it for yourself as an individual? Because you, you've, obviously, you've obviously had it back in like February um do you do you feel less worried about getting it again or is it something that you were never really concerned about to begin with yeah Uh, first of all I I believe that I had it a year ago um which Uh, oh yeah god it would have gone February yeah not not last February February 2020 (laughs) so yes one year ago I believe I had it so because of the circumstances of having to work at home 
I really haven't ventured out that much over the last year. I mean, I haven't been on public transport at all since uh, having to work at home. And therefore, it hasn't concerned me too much of that, it, that, that it was going to have an effect on me. Plus the fact that I believe I had it already probably instilled in my mind a sense that I'd built up a form of immunity. Um, what has concerned me is uh, a mindset of people who have been reluctant or absolutely flat out refused to go along with what's been asked of them, like, like not wearing a mask. I don't think it's too much to ask. I mean, it, it, it's a bit of a nuisance for people like me who wear glasses and you go into a shop, you've got the mask on and your glasses get steamed up. That's, that's a nuisance. But I think people should be prepared to live with something like that. And I really hope that things are going to improve enough so that by the summer, life is more or less back to normal. I mean, I, I do think that the the issue with people not wearing masks, I, I think it's an issue that's more common in the US than, than over here. However, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't exist over here. Of course it does. But, like, when it, when it came to COVID, before and after getting the vaccine, were you more concerned with your own safety or the safety of other people? I'm equally concerned with the safety of everyone. You know, myself, you, our neighbours, people I encounter in a shop. We're all affected equally by this. And I think everybody owes each other the courtesy of being responsible to ensure that people don't get harmed any more than they already have by this. No, it, I think I think it's it's interesting, and I I have to say that this is the first time that I I, I almost think that this pandemic is being handled in a a good way. You know, I don't think there's any question that the vaccines have been, like you said, that it's been in very well handled, um, and I also think that the government's attitude towards the easing of lockdown is good to be fair um i don't think i can really really fault them for that what gets me is when you hear people saying that the government are following the science too much which kind of baffles me because i think when it comes to a pandemic you kind of have to follow the science primarily of course i i understand the issues with the the economic sides of things but yes i th i think that to be fair, the roadmap out of lockdown is actually a, a, a strong exit strategy. Um, yeah, I don't want to get into the politics of it too much. Uh, what I will say is that the government has to tread a fine line between science and economics. Now, it's my preference that they favour science, but they've got an economy to run as well. Oh, of course, um, yeah. That's as much as I'm going to say. No, no, no. I, I, I get that, totally. Um, so, <laughs> I was just going to say something really dumb. I was going to be like, would you recommend a vaccine to a friend? <laughs> if your question is more, what's my advice to people who haven't had the vaccine? It's, don't worry about it. You must have had injections before. Um, and if the place I had it is any indication... You'll be very, uh, you'll be treated very well. You'll be professionally directed about where to go and what to do. And make sure after you've had the injection that you use your full 15 minutes to sit down and rest before leaving the place. I didn't know that. Did you just sit down for 15 minutes before going out? Yeah, you, you, you have to rest for 15 minutes. Um, in fact, um, where I was during my 15 minute break there was uh, someone who took ill during that period I, I don't want to talk in any specifics about it but I, I, I just hope she's alright now I, I, I'm, I'm sure she is, I'm sure she was taken care of very well anyway, um, thank you for, for sharing your experience Dad. I think it's, it's really important that people hear first hand how positive the experience can be, especially 
for those who might be feeling a bit unsure about getting the vaccination, who might feel like it's unsafe, even though it's gone through the numerous tests that it needs to, it's good to know that it's it's very professionally handled. So, so thank you. Time for the tea and talk. Dad has requested that we sing a song together. I uh, I don't know how this is going to go or whether it's a good idea, but. This is what he wants. Can, can I just say, uh, listeners, Rose and I have just been talking about the vaccine, which is quite a serious subject. And I wanted to end on a cheerful, maybe silly, maybe chaotic note. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to go over recording, but we'll give it a go. Um, Dad, you are probably familiar with the song uh, California Dreaming, Mamas and Papas. Um, he just nodded. Um, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you can't hear me nod. Uh, he uh, actually taught this, like the two parts to so this is uh, to me as a child. Um, so I remember it very well. Are you ready? <laughs> we'll hum the instrumental break. We're doing the whole song, okay? It then it's two and a half minutes. All right, two and a half minutes of <laughs> ready content. All right. All the leaves are brown. All the leaves are brown. And the sky is grey. And the sky is grey. I've been for a walk. On a winter's day. I'd be safe and warm. I'd be safe and warm. If I was in LA. If I was in LA. California dreaming on such a day stopped it to a church I passed along the way when I got down, got on, my down knees, on my knees and I pretend to pray I pretend to pray you know, you know the preacher, preacher likes, the cold. likes the cold he knows I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay. California, California dreaming, dreaming on such a on winter's such a day, day. On such a weird as California dreaming. On such a weird as California dreaming. On such a weird as Hey, I think that was pretty good. So do I. I think we, I think we uh, did very well on that. Thank you, Dad, for for joining me on this week's episode. Um, it's been fun. Have you enjoyed? I was about to ask. Have you enjoyed you yourself? But yes, um, do you have any final thoughts? To your audience, I say, look after yourself. This will come to an end. Thank you for that. I will obviously be here next week. So I will hear you all next time. Thank you. Goodbye. It's Wednesday at 11, so you know what that means. It's time for the TM Talk. Wait, what's that? Dad, seriously.